Hi, I'm Eric Herzog, the president-elect for the Society for Research on Biological Rhythms and a professor of biology at Washington University in St. Louis. And it's my pleasure today to be with uh, Dr. Charlotte helfrich Forster from the University of Würzburg, where she's a professor of neurobiology. Welcome, Charlotte. Welcome. So you had the opportunity to chair a session here at the society meeting. Can you tell us a little bit about the theme of your session? Yes, so my session was about effects of climate changes on biological timing systems. And what were some of the themes that the speakers uh, hit on during this session? Okay, all was more or less about global warming and they work on different organisms. So the first speaker was Barbara Helm who works on bird migration. The second speaker was Corey Williams who works on hibernation in an Arctic ground swirl. swirl. And the third speaker was Bill Bradshaw, who works on a very special mosquito living in a plant. And the last spe speaker was Robertson McClung, who works on plants and their adaptation to the environment. Seems like a timely topic. Yes, uh, it is, it's absolutely. So, yeah, you have to know that the temperature on Earth changed, increased uh, for about one degree Celsius during the last 20 years. And that sounds not much, but it's really huge. And that causes the global warming, meaning that we have warmer winters, the spring starts earlier, autumn start, yeah, starts later. And in addition, there are also big changes in precipitation. So for example, in the very north, in the Arctic, we have much more precipitation, whereas in the temperate region, it's reduced. And of course, all animals have to adapt to that. Interesting. So you have representatives studying different organisms at different places on the planet. Were there some themes that came out or some highlights you'd like to share? Absolutely. So for birds, for example, who are migrating in autumn thousands of kilometers into the south and over winter there, they have to get the right moment to come back in spring. And they use their annual clock to do so. The problem is that they don't know how the temperature and the climate is in their origin where they breed. So they, they use this, uh, this annual clock to get the right moment. But the problem is when there is global warming, they are late. They come late, meaning that it's hard to find them for them the right territories and then to finish the breeding so they have less offspring. So it's really difficult mm -hmm. for them and they yeah, they, some of them are close to extinction. Mm -hmm. Were there other highlights, so extinction and, and breeding problems? Yeah, for the hibernators it's different. So for the Arctic ground squirrel, they have a very interesting hibernation down in the ground. And they end it again by the annual clock, tells them when to end it. And the males have to do it earlier because they need almost one month to mature their testes. And so they awake earlier, but they stay underground and feed on the food they have collected the, the year before. And the problem is, if there is more precipitation, you have a higher snow load, meaning that they have to have more provian to feed on and they don't have. That mm -hmm. means that some of them really starve before the snow melts. In females, it's different, so they are more plastic. They realize, oh, there is still a lot of snow, snow, so they go back to hibernation and they later. But for the males, it's a problem. And again, they cannot reproduce. Do you want to say anything about the mosquito study? Mosquitoes are also very interesting. So mosquitoes are much more plastic, so they don't mind so much. If it's warmer, it's even good for them, so they reproduce much better. And the problem for us is, that now the mosquitoes living in the tropics migrate towards the north and they usually carry vector diseases as malaria, the dengue fever, Lyme disease and others. Meaning for us that it's really we are at risk to get to have to deal with these um, diseases here and then we are not prepared for that. Wow. So real world consequences of climate change Absolutely. on circadian clocks and how these organisms are adapting. Thank you very much. Welcome.